Good morning, third grade. It's Miss Barker from Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship. We are on day seven of our spiral review, and I think we have about a week left of this, so I hope you guys are getting some review in and watching these videos and getting your answers in on our assessments. So today's looks a little bit different, so I'm just going to continue um, teaching through this one, and then I think I might add an assessment at the end of the week instead of today. Um, so then you guys can kind of practice your uh, all the things that we've already done in class. So let's start with number one. Which of these models a fraction that is equivalent to the fraction modeled below? So our fraction modeled below is one two thirds. So two thirds. So we need to find one that matches pretty much what this one matches. So we have two thirds here. We have two four. Six, seven, eight, two eighths. That's not even close. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, two sixths. That's also not very close. One, two, three, four eighths. Four eighths would be, let's look, it's right in the middle, so that would be a half. So we know that one's not correct. So let's look at D. One, two, three, four sixths. So let's see. We have about this much left. Does it match this much left in two thirds? It does. So D would be our answer. Okay, um, looks like it goes, jumps over to three and then two is down here. So I'm just gonna jump over to three. Which fraction is equivalent to two? So if you're looking for um, something that is equal to two, we need to take and look at all of these. So A, it says half. And we know that half is not equal to two because it's not even equal to one. So we know that A is not correct. B, two halves. Anytime that you have the same number on top and the same number on bottom, it always equals the number one. So we know B is not correct. C, four halves. Now before school ended, um, I know I taught my class how to kind of look at fractions when there was a bigger number on top and a smaller number on bottom. So we have a four and we have a two. So if you can divide the four by the number on the bottom, so four divided by two, that gives you two. So you know that four halves is actually equal to two. So if our question says which fraction is equal equivalent to two, we know that C is correct. So let's check D before we move on. D is two fourths. Now two fourths is just two fourths. It doesn't equal two because if we have if we have four parts and you only have two of them shaded, that's not quite even one yet. So we know that two fourths is not correct. So we know our answer is C. Number two. Okay, this one is a little tricky. I want you guys to try it on your, um, if you have a paper or a whiteboard or anything at home that could, um, work for you trying this problem out. I'm going to use my pen on this and hope that it works today. I'm working on getting a whiteboard on here so you guys can see it as well and I hope to have that out next week. So our carrot is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and we have length from three. It looks like we have threes, we have twos. It looks like our two big numbers are two and three. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna make sure that my pen is working. Maybe it's not going to work today. Nope. Okay, well, it's not gonna work today. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw my own. Let me grab a marker, because I lost my marker. I'm going to draw my line, okay, and it's, we know it's out of four parts, so I know I need four parts. So it looks like our smallest number is two, it looks like our biggest number is three, just like that. Now we need to look at our chart, we need to place labels. So after two comes two and one fourth. So let's look at our two and one fourth. Yes, we have a two and one fourth. So I'm going to write two and one fourth on there. 
my note here. I'm going to write it actually a little bit bigger for you. Two, three, four. Just like that. Okay. So, two and one fourth. We know that there's letter B, it looks like. Let's do that. Let's do that. Two and fourth. Okay. Now, we have two and two fourths, which can also be. If this is right in the center, it can also be two and one half because it is halfway. Then we have two, do we have two and three fourths? Doesn't look like we have any, but we can still label it two and three fourths. And then we have threes. Okay, so now we know A. I'm going to write A, H are both threes. That's all we have for those. B is two and one fourth, so I'm gonna write a B. Um, D is two and one fourth. F and G. Wow, that did not look like a G. It's okay. G. Those are all two and four. Now we need two and a half, which is are going to be our C. And it looks like it for that. Our two was our E. And our three was H and A we got. And two and three fourths, we don't have anything. So there's our number line. Now I just wanted us to complete the line plots. That's what I did. You could have just used also X's if you wanted. So instead of writing B, D, F, G, you could have put one, two, three. You could have put four X's. It's like... We kind of learned how to do that in school too. Okay. Let's move on past that one. Okay. Number four. Brayden worked for two hours. Mateo worked for eight hours. They each earned $10 for every hour that they worked. How much more money did Mateo earn than Brayden? So now we know that we have to use cubes. It's hard for you guys to do um, unless you have a paper, but if you have a paper, feel free to do cubes. So we know that we have to circle that Brayden worked two hours. So I'm gonna write a B for Brayden. And I'm gonna write a M for Mateo, just like that. Now, Brayden, it says he worked two hours. Mateo worked eight. They each earned 10 per hour. So I'm gonna write $10. Now when it says they earn, each earned $10 for every hour. So each and for every hour means you have to multiply. So we did eight for Mateo, two for Brayden, and then we times it by how much money they make per hour. So how much more money than Mateo? So first let's find our actual um, amount of money that they earned. So Brayden, two times 10, 20. So we know he earned $20. Mateo earned $80. Now it wants to know how much more did Mateo earn than Brayden. So if you want to know how much more that someone earned than someone, you have to subtract it. So 80 minus 20 is $60 more. So Mateo earned $60 more than Brayden. Okay, let's move on to number two. Okay, number five. There are 23 tables in the library. Each table has four chairs. Okay. This problem, Ms. Barker actually had a very rough time with because she wasn't reading it correctly. So we're going to read it slowly and correctly this time. So I know there are 23 tables in the library. Okay, let's keep that in our head. Each table has four chairs. Third graders sit in all of the chairs at three tables. Okay, so I'm gonna even draw my tables out. I'm gonna put one chair, two chairs, three chairs, four chairs. I'm gonna do this for all my tables. Okay, I did all of my tables. So there's my three tables. And each of them have four chairs. 
So we know all the tables have four chairs, no matter what, okay? So these are our third graders, and I'm gonna write third grade. And we know that they have three tables, so I'm gonna label my tables one, two, and three. Our fourth graders are sitting at six tables. One, two, three, four, line here so you know which ones are fourth grade. And I'm going to draw four tables. Or chairs I mean. Now I have my six tables, and I have four chairs at each of them. Okay. Now one, two, three, four, five, six tables. Okay. So for third grade, we know that there are four chairs and three tables. So we know we have to do four chairs times three tables, and it equals what? It equals 12 total chairs. Now we need to do fourth grade. So we know there's six tables and we know that there's four at each table. So then we need to do six times four equals 24 chairs. Okay, so we have that all done. That's a lot of work, Sean. Just like that. Okay, it wants to know the let if the letter C stands for the number of chairs with students sitting in them, write an equation that will help you find C. Okay, I want to go back to where it says there are 23 tables in the library. Do we actually need that information? We do not. That is called a distractor. That is to distract you. They don't even talk about the 23 tables. They are just talking about how each table has four chairs, and we only need to know that there's three tables for third grade and there's six tables for fourth grade. So we're just going to skip right over that and just move on. So now we just need to find that letter C. So if the letter C stands for the number of chairs with students sitting in them, we have to write an equation to find C. So we know that we have, I'm gonna leave my 12 and my 24 on my board and I'm gonna erase all my tables. And then rewrite them. So we know that third grade has 12 chairs. And we know that fourth grade has 24 chairs. Okay. Third grade, I'm gonna write third and I'm gonna write fourth next to this. So we know. Now, we need to make that letter C stand for something. So, it stands for the number of chairs with students sitting in them. So we know that we have 12 third grade, we have four fourth grade. So we need to find out how many chairs all together. So if you're doing it all together, you need to add. And once you add those, you are going to find the total of chairs that are used. So 12 plus 24 equals C. So 12 plus 24 equals 36 chairs. So I'm gonna write C equals 36 chairs. And I'm actually gonna write chairs taken so they know that those are the ones that the kids are sitting. All right, that is all for today. I did all five questions with you guys because I thought these ones were some of the tough ones and I wanted to help you out a little bit and make sure that you knew what you were doing. All right, um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.